Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Ramin Farzad Rad. I'm the CTO and uh, VP of uh, uh, Technology Development in the Networking and uh, Automotive Connectivity. Today, I'd like to present to you our proposal for self-diagnosis system in, uh, in vehicle networks inside the car. The autonomous vehicles require very reliable networks to communicate massive amount of critical data around the car. Such need for reliable and high bandwidth communications is driven by processes and features such as AI and machine learning for autonomous driving, and data processing, time sensitive networks, security, power distribution over the data lines and so forth. So this figure shows a high level uh, block diagram of an in vehicle network inside the car. It consists of different sensors. The sensors could be radar, lidar, uh, sonars, cameras, specifically there are switches in the car uh, that connects all these links together and to the CPUs and GPUs that do the, all the processing and so forth. The redundancy in the system is used to back up, uh, as a backup to prevent unexpected uh, life-threatening failures. So all links must be in perfect operational shape to ensure this redundancy always exists. And uh, in case of any uh, events, the redundant path can come into the loop and uh, ensure that there's always proper connectivity across the car from any point to point. A self-diagnosis that can provide real-time healthiness of the car network is essential to the system level functional safety. The IVN can be used to enable such real-time self-diagnosis capability across the entire network under realistic driving conditions. In addition, with advanced data processing technology, such as AI and machine learning, we can have more effective prediction of network healthiness. Oops. They jumped too much, I think, yeah. So the first category of the failures that we want to talk about is the full failures or persistent full failures. For example, uh, these are the type of uh, failures that uh, they are, you know, once they happen, it breaks the link completely, like uh, damages or permanent damages in the cables connectors or uh, faulty ECUs that cause links to go down in the network. Another category is the persistent marginal performances. Uh, for example, the quality degradation in the link component that impact the link margin or bit error rate that is caused by factors like aging, damages in the components. And uh, finally, the sporadic failures that are occasional and cause bad links from time to time, but not always uh, there. Such failures are caused by, for example, loose connectors or disconnect in the cable shields that can result in high electromagnetic ingress into the cable. So the mechanism behind these failures can be root cause in different components. Uh, we've categorized them into the persistent and the sporadic uh, cases. The persistent ones basically are the bad connectivity in the passive component, for example, such as cables, connectors, or bad or failed electronic components like ECUs, FIs, switch ASICs, and so forth. On the sporadic sides, uh, most of them potentially are in the passive components, such as uh, bad links caused by loose connections that cause, you know, during the car movement and vibrations, you know, these links can be connected or disconnected. Also bad link shielding, meaning that the shield may not be connected properly to the ground or there's no shield. And as a result, the exposure to electromagnetic wave is uh, high, but in a normal scenario, we don't notice it and cause like sporadic errors from time to time. So <clears throat> we believe all persistent link failures can be detected at vehicle startup. A central diagnostic unit or CDU in the vehicle network can provide the network health net met metrics or NHM that is a combination of channel quality or channel insertion loss, channel signal integrity or discontinuities along the channel, 
and the, also the link quality metric, which consists of parameters such as the link up time in every link, SNR margin, and bit error rate. And finally, the electromagnetic sensitivity, or basically the shielding effectiveness in, in the links. So for the first one, to check the channel quality, the CDU sets one transmitter, one, one side of the link in transmit mode and the other side in the receive mode. The transmitter file transmit two tones with predefined frequencies and amplitudes, one at low frequency and one at high frequency. For example, that low frequency tone could be one tenth of a Nyquist and the high frequency tone can be the Nyquist frequency. Then the receiver on the other side receives the two tones and uses the magnitude of the two tones to calculate the link uh, drop or the effective insertion loss with the frequency of the channel. And then receiver passes the information to the CDU and then CDU evaluates if this link drop or the amount of insertion loss is acceptable or as a pass or fail for that specific link. The other check is the online is the link continuity or signal integrity. In this test mode, the CDU sets the first phi of every link in a transmit mode and second phi in receive. The first phi transmits a pulse and uses the TDR to scheme to evaluate the signal integrity and detect discontinuities in the link. The above steps are repeated in the other direction and for all links. The link discontinuity information meaning the location and magnitude of discontinuity of both files in every link is communicated to the CDU. And then the CDU, of course, will look at all these discontinuities and compare them to certain metrics that it has for those specific links. And based on the magnitude of these links and uh, also uh, the, the number of them will decide whether this is acceptable or not as a good link in general. And uh, if the link passes the first two steps, basically the link uh, quality metric and the signal integrity, then the link quality metric check is initiated by CDU. In this mode, the CDU initiates all links to start with regular traffic. And once the link is established, it requests every link to, to send its link up time, bit error rate, SNR information uh, for both sides of the link. And then the CDR analyzes the information to calculate a link quality metric per link. And of course, uh, it uses this uh, LQM with different thresholds uh, per link to pass or fail or provide a warning to the higher level system. For example, for less critical links like telemetrics traffic, the specs can be more relaxed. For critical links like ADAS uh, type of traffic, traffic or that is used for autonomous driving, the requirements are much more strict. So if there is some marginality in the link, there should be a quick warning uh, and a high priority notice uh, to the system that, to, to address this type of uh, marginality or problem. So LQM can, be provide, can provide a wide coverage of the whole link end-to-end, uh, -end, including uh, not just the passive component, but also the active component in the link. So that's a very important step in the self-diagnosis of uh, the link. So the next step is the electromagnetic volumetry check. This test takes advantage of the reciprocity nature of the electromagnetic waves or signals. Meaning if a link has bad shielding, it results in higher EM emission as much as it causes higher EM sensitivity. In this test, the CDU activates the files of each link one at a time to transmit a clock signal at the signaling Nyquist frequency of that specific uh, link. This can be done by sending a pattern like a 1010 sequence at the baud rate of uh, this uh, specific phi. The, there are dedicated antennas that need to be placed uh, tuned to each uh, Nyquist frequency of the installed links. The number of antennas are, won't be that many. Like, for example, if you have 100 meg, 1 gig, and 10 gig links, uh, you would only need uh, three antennas because yeah, there's only like three specific uh, distinct uh, baud rates in the system. And these antennas measure the EM emission level from each active link and send that to the CDU. <clears throat> Links with uh, high emission, higher than expected level, 
are flagged as faulty. Of course, the, again, the extent of the fault can be determined by the level of emission failure warning, and also the same as we said before, depending on how that critical that link is, uh, whether it's a uh, autonomous type traffic or term metrics, then the threshold for warning or failure are different. This diagnostic process increases the vehicle startup time because it has to be implemented or done for every link. But there are a number of techniques that uh, can be used to minimize it, some uh, innovative techniques that uh, I'll try to show one of them here for you. For example, <clears throat> links with different Nyquist frequencies can be activated and measured simultaneously to save this diagnostic time. Here, like every link with the different color has running at a different frequency, different baud rate, therefore his knife frequency, frequency would be different. So if they're sending 1010s zero, one or like some Nyquist frequency out, they're sending uh, basically these uh, power at different frequencies that are distinct. So if they're run together at the same time, they won't interfere with each other and they can be detected with separate antennas. So as a result, if one link is, let's say, 10 gig, the other one is one, and the other one is, uh, let's say, 100 meg, you can test all three of them at the same time. And once this test uh, is done for these three links, then you go to three other links, then you activate them again at the same time, again, but making sure they are running at distinct frequencies. So by doing this, you effectively, uh, we can save uh, time by at least, you know, a factor of two or three inside the car for that startup. And of course, there are other techniques that, you know, we can further reduce that. Now, sporadic or occasional network problems in the vehicle may not always be detected at the startup uh, vehicle or the vehicle startup. Two main causes for sporadic failures are one, as we discussed uh, earlier, is the improper or bad link shifts leading to hard and expected RF in ingress and noise that uh, you, you cannot tell necessarily in the beginning whether you, you have a problem, even at the startup, if you run traffic, everything is fine. But uh, if all of a sudden you have uh, exposures to some high power uh, electromagnetic field or RF ingress, you start getting that uh, error. Uh, of course, in the earlier slide, I discussed how you can detect it, as I just uh, mentioned at startup to check the quality of the shielding if the shield is constantly bad so that's something that we can detect at startup even if it's a type of sporadic failure but there are other sporadic failure that is that are caused by vehicle movements basically that uh, movements that lead to vibrations and vibration affecting the leak signal integrity of shielding where for example you have a loose connection in a connector or a socket uh, that vibration can you know, cause problems in the link or the sh ground shield is not very well connected, there's loose connections there and so on and so forth. That will only happen during the link startup, not that's, you know, when the vehicle stopped. So these bad link shielding can be detected, of course, the first type during the startup and the other type that caused by movement can also be detected by CDU. Basically, what CDU needs to do is to continuously monitor the LQM for every network link during the vehicle movement. Links that uh, sporadically fail, their target LQM are identified. And uh, uh, of course, to avoid any failure in the whole system of the car and in the vehicle network, they go through these redundant uh, links. You know, if you, you get a failure, a packet cannot go through uh, that specific link, there it's routed through another channel. But the record of how bad a link is and how bad it's or how often it's LQM uh, results in a failure is detected uh, by the CDU. And at the end, if the frequency of these uh, type of failures is uh, more than expected, then uh, that specific link is uh, flagged. That is a problem and needs to be replaced. It's not like one off just failure in that specific packet or link traffic that happened and didn't repeat. So that frequency together with uh, the level of LQM is, gives you an indicator whether that link needs to be changed or addressed or not. So <clears throat> the ability to predict potential failures in the vehicle network is required to achieve, is actually required to achieve high level of safety targets. Predicting uh, uh, 
a prediction of network healthiness requires historical network health metrics data of the entire vehicle and also that those of all other vehicles of similar time over time because all that information is required to be able to tell what type of failures or why what type of uh, signals or issues in the car has resulted to some other bigger failures in the car the health prediction of all individual channels and uh, expanding that data to the whole network is possible in uh, using today's AI uh, and machine learning uh, with all the advanced technologies that is possible. For example, this uh, figure shows a kind of high level block diagram of the idea that this is inside a car that all the channel quality metric, uh, channel continuity, signal integrity, the link quality metrics, and together with them for environmental parameters such as temperatures and so forth are continuously sent to this uh, AI diagnostic. And whenever failures will also happen as a result of this, this will be correlated to this set of uh, information that has already been collected. And that data will also be sent, uh, shared to the, to the cloud. Now, at the cloud level, the information for all similar vehicles, when uh, can be combined together, can be processed, and uh, correlated together. Meaning, if uh, in the future, we, a vehicle kind of starts detecting certain pattern in the channel qualities or uh, link quality metrics and so forth, can predict what kind of real failures uh, to expect because similar cars and similar issues happen, they ended up having uh, this type of failures in the car. So that becomes a very, uh, I would say, valuable tool for the cars to predict what worse could be coming and uh, prevent that ahead of time or provide warning ahead of time. And uh, that's a very uh, strong and powerful tool. So at the end, in the summary, we discussed that self-diagnosis can provide real healthiness of the network, which can bring a lot of values to the end system. The central diagnostic unit that continuously uh, initiates, collects, and store data uh, about the network healthiness uh, from the star smart files in the car of the entire network can make that possible uh, inside the car. And uh, such data collection together with combination of the big data inside the clock and sharing that data to the, with the cloud together with the AI processing make effective prediction of network healthiness possible. And of course, the, the such prediction of potential failures in the vehicle can be can significantly assist in achieving better safety goals, uh, as well as great economic ben benefits to both the car manufacturers and the car owners at the end of the day. So uh, at the end, uh, I'm open to any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.